I'm at Super Judge. Now, today is Friday. Praise God. Are you excited? Now, we've been dwelling on some important stuff all week. The things you need for eternal life. The things you need for eternal life. Now, he, we began yesterday looking at, he says, add, 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 add. Now, I'm going to show you how that is going to affect your receiving of eternal life but before we go into that let's call for that daily bread are you ready say father i receive today my daily bread it's coming to me now and i declare i will lack nothing this weekend in jesus name amen praise god it is so in your life you will lack nothing. Amen. Praise God. And Father, we honor you today. Thank you for you will bring your word in truth. And it will affect everything we do today. I declare burdens are lifted right now. Yokes are destroyed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Now we are looking at 2 Peter chapter 1. And actually, we are dealing on the things you need for eternal life. Our purpose is to live eternal life. If you are not living eternal life, then you are not living. Jesus, God said in John 3, 16, John actually said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have. So it's not just about, I'm not perishing you need to have eternal life and jesus said this is eternal life that they might know thee the only true god and jesus christ whom god have sent and i told you there is no way you will know god by studying the only way you will know god is when he reveals himself to you that is the only way you will know him thank you holy spirit so we are looking at what peter spoke up here and said there are certain things that if they be in you they will aid you in the knowledge of the lord jesus christ what does that mean they will aid you in your exhibiting or manifesting eternal life now those are the things we began to look at in the last two days it says add this add to your faith virtue add to your virtue that's virtue class no, um, excellence add to virtue knowledge you need to know add to knowledge self-control and then add to self-control now when he talks about self-control he he is telling you thank you lord jesus he is telling you be in charge on how your emotions lead you so in exhibiting self-control he said you will need to add patience because it's patience that will truly work that out for you. Without patience, you will lose that your self-control. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. So he says, add patience to your self-control. And to patience, he says, add godliness. And to godliness, he says, add brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, he says, love charity now he goes on in verse 6 now um, sorry verse 8 second peter chapter 1 and verse 8 and says for if these things what things what he just listed here adding to your faith virtue knowledge self-control patience godliness brotherly kindness charity he said if all these things be in you how do they get into you you add them 
you are them. And I showed you how they are so related. It says, if all these, these things be in you and abound, not just sparingly, not just, you know, <laughs> two years ago, I was patient too, but now, no. It says, if they be in you and they keep growing and growing and growing and growing, praise God. Yeah, it means don't ever let your faith stop. Don't ever let your faith stop. You keep pushing yourself to do the right things. You keep pushing yourself in your faith. Now, while you're pushing yourself in your faith, all these things are working and they are growing in you. Praise God. Because I'll tell you sometimes why you need self-control, for example. You know, you're believing God for a miracle. God told you, look, this week, I'm going to give you abundance. I said, whoa. And then that very week, on Monday, God spoke to you on Sunday that this week you are going to see a miracle. He spoke to you on Sunday. By Monday, someone comes up to you and is trying to bring some corrupt stuff for you to do together. He said, look, there's, a, there's, there's one money that we can steal. Nobody would know. And then you begin to reason out. Mm, God told me that I'll see a miracle. Maybe this is the miracle that God is... No! That is where you exercise self-control. Even in your thoughts. There is a knowledge that God is going to bless you this week. Yes. But then an opportunity came to steal. Maybe this is God. No, it is not. What are you going to do? Self-control. This is not how God works. I'm not going to, I'm not going to follow through with this. I'm not going to do this. And self-control, why are you at it? It's patience. Patience. God actually said he will bless me. And I wait for that blessing to come. Lord, I know this is not your way of doing things. So I'm going to wait for that blessing to come. And while you're at it, godliness is at work. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So he says, if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, if these things are in you, they keep expanding your verb, your, your verb. You know, you know, that verb, things that opens and close and control. Now, he said, it opens you up. To fruitfulness. So it makes it, it makes Jesus attracted to you. If you have these things, it makes Jesus attracted to you. And guess what? He's not attracted to you in trying to come and meet your needs alone. He's attracted to you because he's in the kind of character that looks like you. Because all these things exhibit in you the fruit of the Spirit. And when Jesus sees that kind of thing walking in you, he is surely attracted. He will visit you. He will come to you. And he's not just coming to you to tell you stories. He is coming to you to give you life eternal. That's what he's coming to do. Because he will come. You see, when you are at it, exhibiting these things, you know what Jesus comes and do? Because he sees you walking it out. He will come to you and say, you know, let me teach you about patience. Let me teach you about self-control. Let me teach you. Now, what do you think he's going to teach you? Formulas? No, he's going to tell you about himself. You remember, he'll tell you, you remember when, you know, I, I was at the Garden of Gethsemane and I prayed, yeah, Lord, that day, I, sincerely speaking, I almost gave up. But this is what helped me. Now, what's he teaching you? Patience. And you learn and say, whoa. Thank you, Lord. You learn. That's how I was meditating on his word sometime many years ago. You know, I was just meditating on his word. And, and he began to show me. He, he said, you know, you know the wedding that I turned water into wine? I said, yeah. Have you ever thought about who was getting married that day? I said, not really. And he said, you know, I had sisters, right? I said, yeah. Oh, 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 oh praise God. Ah, oh, wow. Wow. Now, I've not heard anybody teach this. But I was just fellowshipping with him and then he said, I turned water into wine. Yeah, he did. You know who was getting married? 
No, no. Now your mind tries to scan the scriptures. Jesus was invited to the wedding. His disciples also were invited to the wedding. And I thought, okay. The Bible never mentioned who was getting married. And then he said, you know, I had sisters. And then it just clicks. Everything now came alive. And I, whoa, whoa. Now he, he didn't need to explain the other parts to me. He just lit. I mean, he just turned on one light. And everything just connected and made sense. Ah, ah, ah. No wonder Mary was too concerned when the wine finished. No wonder she, she came to you as her first son. <laughs> I see, I see, I see, I see. Oh, oh, no wonder. She told the servants, oh, go and meet him. Whatever he tells you to do, do. And I'm sure those servants were thinking, eh, okay, uh, so what do we do? Are you giving us money to go and buy wine? Or are you telling us somebody? And, then, and then he says, fill those water pots. It's their wedding, so he fill the water pots. Now fetch and go and give the chairman of the wedding. Okay, yeah, I'm sure they understand what they are doing. So they will just obey. Why? It is their wedding. Praise God. Ah, like, whoa. <laughs> now, what's that? Now, you, you, don't, you don't know what that means. You think it's just knowledge? No, that's a talent. Now, you, you, your eyes are beginning to open up to the person of Jesus. Like, wow. Now I understand. Whoa, I see. You know, when Mary said, go and meet him, anything he tells you, do. She wasn't expecting a miracle like that. No, she was just expecting him to take responsibility for the wine being finished. He was the first son. And I can just imagine maybe, maybe when they were planning for that wedding, Mary had said they needed maybe 100 barrels of wine. And Jesus said, what, 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 what kind of 100 barrels of wine? Look, we only do 10. <laughs> so when the wife is, I told you, I told you, go and meet him. He's the cause. Go and meet him. <laughs> and you know, Jesus will never be stranded. Praise God. You know, when people argue, hey, is it, why would Jesus um, um, uh, turn water to wine? Is it, is it not alcoholic wine or things like that? Uh, they drank. Whether it's alcoholic or it's not alcoholic, it was a responsibility. You know, <laughs> Oh, Brenesha Brakadisha Kayakopodo. You know, sometimes you hear, you know, I don't know if these things still happen. I think it does. You, know. you want to get married and you go to the girl's parents and you're a believer, she's a believer. And then say, okay, want to marry your daughter, what do we do? And then they now say, you have to bring 10 cartons of beer and one whiskey, one bottle of whiskey. And then you now look at those things and say, I, I, can, I can't do. I can't. Um, we are Christians. We don't drink. They are not telling you to drink it. <laughs> they are telling you this is the criteria to marry our daughter. Now, sometimes you try to negotiate the financial value and then they accept it and give it. But if they insist, brother and sister, you have not seen if you buy it for them. You did not sin. No, you didn't. You want to marry their daughter, they say, this is what it would take to marry our daughter. What if they had told you, go and climb seven mountains? And when you finish climbing seven mountains and come, we'll give you our daughter. What if they had said that to you? So they said, this is what we need before we give you our daughter. So if you give them their wine and their alcohol and their, you have not seen, you didn't drink it. It's when you now go to them and say, ah, we see, we'll shack it together. Hey, you're getting yourself into trouble. Praise God. So because, because, you know, people condemn themselves. Can you imagine when I want to marry? You know, people, it, it's amazing when you, when you cancel couples. And you're talking to a family and they are saying that, I don't know, I'm thinking it's because during the, her wedding, I gave her family people the beer they asked for. I think that is what is affecting. It is not. That's a lie from the pit of hell. Praise God. It is. It's a lie. That's not, that's a least, that can never be your trouble. Praise God. So now, but get this aside. So I'm saying, when you begin to get these things function in you, they will make you, that you, you begin to relate with Jesus on a different level. He will begin to talk to you on things that matter. 
Because you are not just concerned, Lord Jesus, give me money today. Lord Jesus, heal my headache tomorrow. Lord Jesus, you know, because when you're exhibiting self-control, because you're in a situation now, I Lord, I'm not supposed to react, but Lord, I need your help. I need, how do you think he's going to help you? Words. He says, son, think about it this way. He's done that to me many, many times. Think about it this way. What if you do this and this? And... Oh, <laughs> I see. And it's like, Lord, how, how did you come about that? And I said, I'll tell you something. This is how Moses was able to write what happened in the Garden of Eden. He wasn't there. How did he know the story? God told him. All those gist God was giving to him. God, guess what was happening? Eternal life was being released into him. Every time Jesus talks to you about himself, he's giving you eternal life. And, and, and my prayer for you is that truly you will begin to know what it means. He, Peter just told us what you can do. So you get yourself walking on this and allow the Lord Jesus to visit you and begin to tell you things about eternal life. Our time is up. Praise God. Now, I, I hope this, this, this whole week broadcast is a blessing to you. You can live eternal life and you can live it today. Father, we give you praise. Let your word truly find place in our hearts and let us manifest it. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you on Monday. Have the best weekend ever. Bye.